Sometimes a string player will come into my violin shop, open their case, and I can immediately see that there's something badly wrong with their instrument. It can be so frustrating for me because I know the player's really passionate, they want to make beautiful music, they're basically left with this instrument that is substandard. I've been a violin maker and restorer for more than 38 years, so I've seen a lot of instruments. I've seen some really beautiful instruments, and like I said, I've seen some instruments that are a little bit below average, and then I've seen some real duds. So today I'm going to tell you about the six biggest mistakes people make when they're buying their instrument. Now the first thing is the instrument has to have a great sound. It just has to sound beautiful. Why play an instrument if it doesn't sound nice? Quite often people will buy an instrument, especially like some of the worst instruments are the really cheap instruments with lacquer varnish, terrible strings and a terrible bridge and there's nothing you can do to make them sound good. But sometimes you can also get instruments that are actually where people have actually paid thousands of dollars that don't really sound that good. So it's really important that the instrument that you buy, firstly it has to sound beautiful to you, but it should also have a really nice clear and open sound. Now the taste in sound is something that's a little bit in individual and I recommend that a player buys an instrument with a kind of sound that represents their character. But if you are new to the instrument then just a good honest clear and beautiful sound is enough. But if you're a more advanced player you want to make sure that the instrument really represents your personality and character. So you can get instruments with quite a bright and clear sound, you can get instruments with deeper, richer sounds, and you can get some really deep sounding instruments. And, and each have their advantages and disadvantages. So it's good for you to find an instrument that really represents who you are. Now before I go on to the second big mistake that people make, I actually wrote a little report for people who are looking at buying instruments just to make sure they don't make any mistakes and I've popped the link in the description below. Now the second big mistake players make when they buy their instrument is that the instrument is badly set up. And what I mean by the setup is everything that goes on the outside of the instrument. Can't get a D string. Basically the bridge is flat. There's no curvature so the strings don't have really individual space to play on. So the bridge, the shape of the fingerboard, the string heights here at the nut and the bridge, the sound post and the kind of strings. This is one of my beautiful Pierre Lamont master violins and I'm super fussy about how I set up the instrument. So I'm going to show you some of the really important things. So one that's really important is that the peg should move quite smoothly the nut should be the correct height and the string uh, string spacing should be correct and the st string spacing off the fingerboard should be correct. Then the fingerboard needs to have the right shape in this direction as well as that direction. And again, it's something I'm very fussy about. Then the string height here at the fingerboard should be correct. It should be around three and a half millimeters on the E string and five and a half millimeters on the G string of a violin. It can be slightly higher or slightly lower depending on the player. Then this string, this is for a violin. Obviously the measurements are different for viola, cello and double bass. 
but then the whole string spacing from each from side to side needs to be right the sound post needs to fit a hundred percent and be in the correct position and then the instrument needs to have good strings it also the setup there's a chin rest and shoulder rest setup you know it's important that the instrument is comfortable for you as a player so all these things make a big difference to the actual playability of an instrument the third big mistake people make when buying an instrument is that they pay too little or too much for their instrument. Let me explain. So too little is when you buy a really cheap instrument. Some of the really cheap instruments, they cut so many corners that I don't even consider it being an instrument. A uh, cheap violin, for example, I call a VSO, violin shaped object. You can buy them at supermarkets, they're all over eBay, marketplace, and everything. Going to Aldi to get a few goodies. And you can usually pick one up between about $70 Australian to maybe $400 Australian. So maybe uh, four or $500 Australian. So that would be from about 40 US dollars up to about 300 US dollars. This to be solid timber, solid wood violin, top solid spruce, back solid fingerboard, hardwood. Pegs, hardwood, wood nut, hardwood. Tailpiece, metal. These instruments were made really quickly. They come with factory strings that sound tinny and often the setup is terrible. And no matter what people try and tell you, it's very rare that you actually get a good quality, good sounding instrument in that price range. It's only 99 Australian dollars. That's 65 US dollars. Bargain! wonder who that could be. That was quick. If you have the ability to buy an instrument for a little bit more, definitely, it's definitely worth it. Obviously, if that's all you can afford, buy the best sounding possible instrument you can for the price, but it probably won't be so good. Yes! Stop making a sound. <laughs> then also you could pay too much for an instrument. And say you are a beginner and you decide to buy a $20,000 instrument. It's probably not a good time to buy an instrument like that. If you're a beginner and want to buy a quality instrument, maybe spend, you know, maybe $1,000 to... to two and a half, three thousand US dollars. So when you first start, you don't really know what you're looking for. I developed a really beautiful instrument. That's my Pierre Lamont series and Pierre Lamont Master instrument. That is fantastic because it's got that beautiful, rich sound. It's extremely well set up and works really well. But just make sure that you don't overspend and then buy an instrument that might not suit your needs later when you're a beginner. Just buy something that works well and then as you progress, you can change instruments and buy something more expensive. Darling, yes, dear. let's sell the Stradivarius and buy another 20 houses. Oh, what a lovely idea. Yes, it should be lovely, shouldn't it? Again, like I said, you know, if $100 is all you can afford, try and buy the best possible instrument. You know, you shouldn't let that stop you from playing. The fourth big mistake is that people think they can buy an instrument anywhere. I always recommend that you buy your instrument from a trained violin maker or a violin shop that employs trained violin makers. And by trained, I mean properly trained, like properly schooled in violin making. There are a lot of shops out there that call themselves violin shop but don't have 
a high standard of workmanship. So make sure you really look and make sure that the shop firstly set up your instrument well. But also be really careful when you buy your instruments online. Don't, like I would never buy an instrument off some of the shopping websites that sell everything like Amazon or eBay, Temu and those websites because you just don't know what you're going to get. You're not likely going to get an instrument that's set up by a violin maker. So be really careful there that you buy your instrument from a reputable violin shop. Like I've, I've noticed as a violin maker, sometimes people who actually like shops who even get a very, very high reviews the, the workmanship is still not quite up to standard. So be very careful where you buy your instrument, do your research. So a big rookie mistake is that you can, you know, if you think, I want to play a violin, you jump online and you buy a violin. So that can be a big, you know, make sure you do your research. Don't just buy anything. And make sure whatever instrument you have, you buy, has a good money-back guarantee that if the instrument gets to you and it's terrible that, that you can send it straight back. The fifth big mistake people make is they buy an instrument maybe online or somewhere and it has structural problems or even fake labels. So I'll, I'll address both. So fake labels are that an instrument has a particular label, but it's not what the label says. <laughs> oh, look at these labels. I'm just going to copy them. I can definitely double the price of that violin. So now i just got to cut it out. And then I'm going to dip it in uh, tea. I'm going to use tea and I'm going to burn the edges. It's going to look like the real thing. <laughs> and I'm going to get thousands of dollars. I know some unsuspecting violinist is going to fall for it for sure. And that happens a lot. A lot of businesses over the years have just stuck labels into instruments to try and put up their profits just a little bit. So um, make sure you buy your instrument of an ethical business that knows what they're selling, that that where you have real professionals that know their instruments. I don't quite know what this violin is, but it has a Valentinus label, so it must be a good violin. It's only $15,000, so would you like to buy it? It's a good violin. The other big mistake people make is that they buy an instrument with structural problems. So quite often, you see this beautiful old instrument for sale on eBay or somewhere, and then it gets to you and it has major structural problems. But sometimes, if you buy an older instrument from a violin shop, make sure that they tell you exactly what repairs have been done to the instrument. Because things like a sound post patch on the back and things like that, if it's not done well, can cause some real problems or if there's any kind of structural problem. So just make sure that everything is right structurally with the instrument. And that goes back to making sure that you buy your instrument of a reputable person, an ethical person, and someone who really knows instruments. So make sure you buy your instrument. I would always recommend to buy it from a violin maker and restorer or a shop that employs good quality violin makers and restorers. And the final mistake people make is relying on the opinions of one person to buy their instrument. For example, relying on the opinion of your teacher. So I think it's important, you know, like if your teacher is experienced, it's great to get their input. But your teacher isn't the person that will be playing your instrument for the rest of their lives. So just make sure that you like the instrument as well. And then of course make sure that if your teacher is recommending a particular place, make sure that they're not getting kickbacks. 
that it's actually an ethical thing or if the teacher themselves try to sell you instruments just make sure that they've got your best interest at heart and not their bank accounts interest so yes you know if you know you've got a good ethical teachers and most teachers are then it's not a worry you know you get their opinion get their input but just be a little bit careful of if the teacher also wants to make a profit off you and may sell you an instrument that's not as good as you could get but that gives them a big profit there you are these are the six biggest mistakes people make when buying their instruments buying an instrument should be fun it should be exciting you should have a good relationship with the place where you buy your instrument from so if you make a good decision it can really take you to that next level of playing be sure to download my seven essentials report just to give you more information on how you can buy an instrument with confidence and have fun in the process thanks so much for watching if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you find out every time i post a new video in the meantime keep making beautiful music and i'll talk to you guys next time thanks bye